Hello, this is Dr. Nimichek, and I would like to present to you our final data on the use of transcutaneous vagus nerve stimulation associated with lower mechanical ventilation and mortality in COVID-19 hospitalized patients. As everybody is aware, in, uh, around the world, we have uh, high mortality of hospitalized patients with COVID. Here's some large cohorts, China, 71% mechanical ventilation, 61% mortality. Italy, 88% mechanical ventilation, 26% mortality. In the US, high amounts of, of ICU hospitalized patients um, with 30, 40% mortality rates. What's going on here? Well, you, when you look at COVID-19 mortality, you're seeing a common pattern of uh, problems with blood clotting, uh, vascular collapse and septic shock, direct injury to the lung tissue, direct injury, injury to the heart muscle, the immune system is failing, and patients uh, frequently need to go on dialysis because of renal failure. And what seems to be common here is it's looking more and more like the COVID is triggering what is called a cytokine storm. This is a excessive release of inflammatory cytokines from the immune system that seem to be associated with a direct injury of all of these things. In addition, you get then the cumulative effect of immune, immune failure, organ failure, secondary infection with high mortality rates. And of the risk factors we talk about with uh, having a, a bad outcome, these risk factors here are all known, well known in medicine to be have a pre-existing elevated uh, inflammatory cytokine level. So what we believe very well could be going on is not only do you have a cytokine storm in a patient, but these pre-existing conditions may actually have worsened this to begin with, that you basically, your baseline is higher than most other patients, and that could be why you get the injuries leading on to death more likely with patients with pre-existing conditions than not. In particular is ARDS, or Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. This presents in a chest x-ray as this fine little grainy pattern that you see on both sides. Most of us think of a typical bacterial pneumonia, which gives you a consolidation, which is like a single patch, in which case it would be much clearer elsewhere. So this is ARDS and a very common picture with uh, COVID infection, and you can see here through days of, so ARDS is represented by this red bar. You can see its predominance throughout days of symptoms in patients. When you look at severe versus moderate cases of COVID, you can see that these different types of pro-inflammatory cytokines are elevated in all the most severe cases. The standard approach for patients right now, though, unfortunately, is we have, well, we have COVID leads to the cytokine storm, lung and other organ damage that we talked about, and very high mortality rates. All we're doing at present is supportive care, fluids, antibiotics for maybe secondary pneumonias, ventilation if needed, and uh, oxygen pressure support. Um, these are basically efforts to help keep you alive while you your body just fights and recovers from COVID. What we are suggesting since the inflammatory reaction is predominant here is that we engage a well-known anti-inflammatory strategy called vagus nerve stimulation. Excuse me. The vagus nerve stimulates the central autonomic network, which then in turn sends a reflex, natural inflammatory regulating reflex down and can dampen and, and suppress the inflammatory reaction we're seeing in the spleen, lung, as well as the intestinal tract. Here, so our standard COVID uh, reaction, we're working on different antivirals. There's a resdemzivir is one that they're using. But if we can improve the immune system regulation by the body, we can lower this cytokine and predictably we would think we would have less ARDS and other organ failure and improved survival. Well, there's a wide variety of things that are being tried. Steroids, a very anti, 
cytokine specific drugs that are commonly used for like rheumatoid arthritis or Crohn's disease. The problem with a lot of these agents is they're very expensive and they come with other risks of increasing other infections and they aren't widely available around the world. What we're proposing is vagus nerve stimulation. There is a large amount of human and animal data about regulating inflammation. It is very safe. It's been around for a couple decades and very simple. It doesn't require very minimal training. It's inexpensive. They're easy to manufacture. And best of all, they're reusable from patient to patient. So what we proposed in our study is vagus nerve stimulation is going to be the agent we're going to use to decrease cytokines, improve uh, or lessen the organ failure, and improve survival. So we launched a, a small single arm, non-controlled trial in a hospital in the outskirts of Buenos Aires. We're looking for uh, the sub. The study was to enroll 50 plus subjects who were required oxygen on hospitalization. They would then be offered their routine care plus five minutes of VNS at the ear every six hours. And our primary outcome measures were simply just survival and the need for mechanical evaluation. Uh, mechanical ventilation. And here it was done at the Hospital Zonal Virgin de Carmen in Zarate, Argentina. We used a consumer wellness product as our stimulating device. It's called the Vitality Smart Cable. It runs off a smartphone and is able to deliver the exact current we need, uh, stimulatory parameters I should say we need to lower inflammation. Adverse events only happened in two out of the 51 subjects. We had in one subject a little uh, numbness around the mouth, which resolved very quickly, and another who felt a little lightheaded when they were upright. Both of these responded, uh, resolved spontaneously, and did not recur, uh, recur with continued use of therapy with a lower voltage. Comparing uh, our mechanical ventilation without mechanical ventilation in our patients. Of all patients, so again, all patients came in the hospital with low oxygen. If they were required oxygen, uh, they were given the vagus nerve stimulation. And we found we had a remarkably low need for mechanical ventilation, just under 6%. If you look at total survival, we had a remarkably low death rate of only 17.6%. And in the survivors, I'd like to point out, we have a fairly high percentage of people with some of these comorbid conditions. The survivors had uh, the same, if not maybe slightly worse, oxygenation levels on admission as well. There was a handful of patients that only got vagus nerve stimulation twice a day instead of four times a day. So we decided to look at these two groups and in fact, the five minutes of VNS twice a day as a generalization had similar survival and mechanical ventilation uh, requir requirements. All told, since this was an uncontrolled trial, we just compared this to other reported cohorts uh, in the last year. And as you can see, so overall we had a 16% mortality and only 6% of the patients approximately needed um, mechanical ventilation. You can compare that to just in mortality, 50, 28, 39, 23, 33, 21. There are only two other studies that have mortality rates similar to ours. And the mechanical ventilation rate is the lowest that's been reported in any cohort uh, studying hospitalized COVID patients. So what we have found is that in this study suggests that five minutes of VNS at least four times a day may in fact be reducing cytokine release enough that is causing less uh, lung and organ system failure and improved survival. At the time of this uh, recording, the data has been submitted but not yet uh, accepted for peer review publication.